guys, welcome back to the Voice of Diabetes. This is Diana Butici, and today we are gonna talk about the five fruits that I tell all my patients to avoid. Last video that I uploaded, I, I talked about the seven fruit options that I tell patients it's okay to consume with moderation. However, today these fruits, I tell them whenever you can, please avoid them because of the high sugar content. The fruits are naturally very good for us. They have a lot of minerals, they have vitamins, and they even have fiber, which we know is good for diabetic patients and for us in general. Because what fiber does is it slows down the, the absorption of glucose into the bloodstream and it helps keep the blood sugar levels more leveled. Whenever we are talking about fruit content or foods in general, we always focus on what we call glycemic index. Glycemic index is, is a system that we use to rank foods and how quickly carbohydrate foods, including fruits, will turn into sugar and cause an elevation or a rise in blood sugar levels. Therefore, the higher the GI, the higher the glycemic index ranking is, the, the more likely that that food is gonna have a negative impact on your blood sugars, meaning it's gonna raise up your blood sugars too quickly and too high. Therefore, we wanna avoid those foods as much as possible. Today, we're talking about fruits, so I would stick only to talking about fruits and their GI ranking as well. The ranking goes like this. Between 20 and 49 is considered low glycemic index or low GI level. The ranking of 50 to 69 is regarded as moderate GI. And then 70 to 100 is regarded as high GI or high glycemic index. I normally tell patients to avoid those fruits at all costs because they are gonna have a very um, high blood sugar right after they eat the fruit. And obviously with diabetes and in general, we're trying to avoid that. Let's get started, guys. We're gonna start with number five, which unfortunately is one of my favorite fruits. Since I started my specialty in endocrinology, specifically diabetes, and I started learning a lot about glycemic index and what different foods and how they affect us, I have eliminated watermelon. It is very juicy, it's very refreshing. We know it's very delicious, especially now in the upcoming seasons, spring, summer. Watermelon is actually 92% water. Uh, there is a lot of valuable nutrition in this tasty whole fruit. So watermelon is a great source of vitamin A and C. It is very high in antioxidants. But what doesn't make watermelon very great is the glycemic index is 72. So as soon as you eat watermelon, you're gonna see a very uh, a spike in your blood sugars because remember, glycemic index is very high. And the carb content is 11 carbs in one cup of diced watermelon, which is about 152 grams of watermelon. So there actually is a lot of carbohydrates in that too. And there is very, very little fiber. There's about half a gram of fiber in that cup of diced watermelon. So that's what makes it a, a not a good choice. And I tell patients to eliminate it or consume it very rarely, only on special occasions. In, in very tiny amounts because of their high glycemic index, their high carbohydrate content for only a cup, and obviously there's no fiber um, in it. Four is also one of my favorites. I, I hate to say it, but a lot of these fruits I really uh, did enjoy, and unfortunately I had to cut back a lot because I realized how much sugar content is in them. Number four is bananas, guys. Bananas have about 105 calories for a small banana, and they have 27 grams of carbohydrate. They have three grams of fiber and 1.3 grams of protein. They're not the worst option. Normally I tell patients, if you must consume a banana, I tell them to cut it in half, share it with a family member um, so that they're not getting all that carbohydrate rush and they can add some peanut butter, maybe some cottage cheese along with it and dice it up and throw it in like a yogurt, not non-fat um, original Greek yogurt so that that way they're not getting this carbohydrate, um, this, this huge uh, increase in their blood sugar level. They'll have better readings after consuming a banana. Number three is pineapple. Uh, I know pineapples are so delicious um, and it is a great source of vitamin C and manganese, which we mentioned in the previous video. Manganese is very important for wound healing and we know with diabetics, 
who may have an injury, um, they have a much more difficult time with wound healing because diabetes makes wound healing much more difficult and it slows down wound healing. So manganese is very important for that and pineapple has manganese, which is very good. And it's obviously a decent source of B vitamins, vitamin A, and has some fiber. The GI ranking is actually 66 for a pineapple, but there's a lot of carbs in it. So 22 grams of carbs for one cup, um, you know, if you break into chunks, 2.3 grams of fiber. So the GI ranking is moderate and there is a lot of uh, carbohydrate content. It will raise up your blood sugars immediately. Again, I say please eat them very rarely. They should be eaten maybe on only special occasions like birthday celebrations or, you know, a barbecue, which hopefully we'll get to do this summer with the vaccine being out. Before we move on to the top two, guys, please uh, make sure you subscribe, like, comment below, share with family and friends. Number two, number two is mangoes. It is ma almost mango season and we know that mangoes are so delicious. Just a slice of mango can elevate your blood sugars very rapidly, which is another reason why I tell patients to be extremely cautious of mangoes. This is a real story. I had a patient who was doing extremely well. All of a sudden, summer season uh, came in and her A1C spiked by 2%, which you know you probably know that's a lot. That's about 70 points plus raise in blood sugar levels. And I couldn't understand why because she kept telling me she was eating about the same thing. She was still maintaining a very active lifestyle. And I just happened to ask, you know, she said, I'm eating fruit, I eat my vegetables. And then I asked her, what kind of fruit is she eating? She said, oh, it's mango season. I'm eating a lot of mangoes. And that was the issue. She was eating pretty much one mango a day, which really caused an elevation in her blood sugar levels. So they have very high carbohydrate content. They have a lot of sugar content. So really we have to be very, very cautious with mangoes. Estimated that one mango has about 46 to 50 grams of carbohydrates. It is very, very high in sugar content. I mean, that's why they are so delicious and so sweet because they do have a lot of sugar. So I honestly tell patients, you know, I ended up telling that patient to eliminate mangoes and she did. I saw her three months later and she was doing excellent. Her A1C had dropped down to 6%. And it was the first time that she had learned that fruits are actually very saturated in sugar. And she had no idea that, you know, she was always told fruits are good. They have a lot of nutrients, a lot of minerals, a lot of fiber. However, we have to really be diligent and pick out the right fruits for us. So now we are going to move into the number one, which is dried fruit. I absolutely discourage all my patients from buying dried fruit. They are not fresh. Um, what, what they do when they dry the fruit is they take all the water content out, out of the fruit. Therefore, the sugar becomes a lot more concentrated. So there's a lot more sugar than there was initially before the fruit was dried. And obviously, they are, they are in smaller quantities. So therefore, we tend to eat a lot more of them. So I want to compare raisins and I want to compare grapes. One cup of grapes contains 27.3 grams of carbohydrates which is okay, it still has obviously sugar content, but if we are doing one cup of raisins that has a higher concentration of carbohydrates and it goes up to 114 grams per cup. So you're taking one cup of grapes and that is about, um, as I mentioned, 27 grams of carbohydrates. Then we're taking one cup of raisins, so the concentrated version of grapes pretty much, and that is 114, you're almost, it's almost five times the value of what it was before with sugar content. So I absolutely discourage all my patients from buying um, dried fruits. I don't recommend them at all. If you are gonna have a fruit source, I definitely recommend the fresh fruit, which has all the minerals, the water content, and it has all the sources of vitamins and fiber that you need. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment. And if there's something you want me to discuss on the voice of diabetes, just let me know down below and I'll be sure to cover that. All right, guys, I'll see you all next time.